All right, y'all. <laughs> I don't even know where to start. Well, first and foremost, I'm your host, Symphony, and this is the first episode of my new series, An Epiphany with Symphony. So I don't know, when you have the microphone right here, you feel like you don't have to talk loud, you can just whisper. But this is a long time coming. Um, I've always wanted to just be able to get more intimate with the people who watch my channel, who follow what I do. And I know you guys all know me as a thrift guru, but really wanted to start locking in and talking more about the things that are important. Um, things about like mental health, about life, about God, getting close with God, um, how everything's a chain reaction, all that good stuff. It's going to be really fun. I really hope you all enjoy it. But I am excited because this is the first episode of it. And literally, if I could tell y'all how this happened, it literally happened randomly. Um, I bought this podcast microphone when I was in New York. So so approximately two years ago, I bought this microphone from Amazon when they were having a little Amazon Prime sale. And I was like, you know what? One day I'm going to have my own podcast and I'm just going to be talking and I don't know what I'm going to talk about, but life ended up happening. You guys know if you follow my journey, I went through a lot of like trials, tribulations, um, people walking away from me, just life in general. I was forced to deal with a lot of like sadness and abandonment issues, I would say, um, the last two and a half years or so. But hey, glory be to God, we made it out. I'm here right now. But I literally opened up the microphone just now and I was like, let's just do a tester episode. If it turns out great, cool. If it doesn't, you guys won't know. This this won't exist. This won't be on the internet. But um, yeah, I want to just get straight into the topic. You guys know me. If anyone knows me, I am a lover girl to the core. So I thought, what better way to start off my first episode of an epiphany with symphony than by talking about love. So if you are a lover boy out there, a lover girl out there, you're going to want to tune in. I have no idea what I'm going to talk about. I have nothing written down. I have nothing planned. There's nothing on the screen behind this camera. I'm just going to talk and we're just going to flow and vibe. I wanted to talk about love because like I said before, anyone who knows me, I love love. I love the idea of love. I love what love can do. I love how love brings people together. But sometimes when you love love so much, you end up just getting caught up in, in that idea alone and not what love actually is. So very interesting. I um, met a friend. I didn't meet him in person, but we talk a lot <laughs> at night and during the day. We just talk a lot. Um, he's... He's really cool. He's really fascinating. But we end up having these really interesting conversations. And one of the conversations we had was was about love. And it was about, um, I was saying love is complicated. And he was like, not really. You know, like if you're, if you're someone who believes in God and believes in the Bible, like his words are there clear and evident. Like love is patient. Love is kind. You know, love is being described so much in the Bible, especially from Jesus. And he went on to tell me that love is an action word. And I think sometimes we get love mixed up with emotions. Something like just literally clicked in my head when he said that. And I was like, wow, you're right. Like love isn't complicated. Like it's the emotion part of it. And I realized that me, you guys know I'm 28, 28 years of my life, I've been loving the wrong way. Or I've been confusing love with intense emotions. And you'll realize it because if you're someone who... Like, think about people that you've dated in the past that you said that you loved, and you could have loved them, but you ever seen, like, months or years go by, and you're just like, I really I really didn't love you like how I thought I did. Like, I thought I was so obsessed with you, but I really wasn't. You really weren't in love as much as you thought you were. You thought you were so in love, and this is the person I'm going to be with, and blah, 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 blah. We're going to get married, have 3.5 kids, you know, the whole, the whole ordeal, the whole shebang. And then time goes on, and you end up with someone else, you end up married, you end up having kids, and you're just like, wow, I... I thought I knew what love was, but had no idea, no clue. And I started just really diving into that, that whole idea that love is an action word and love is like you making a choice every day. Love is what Jesus did on the cross for us, like died on the cross for our sins. Even though we didn't acknowledge him, we didn't care for him, we wouldn't have died for him, but he did that for us. And like, that's what love is. Like, even on the bad days, you're still choosing to love your partner. You're still choosing to love your friends and you're still choosing to love your parents, whoever else it may be, you know? And love is also loving someone that may not love you back because at the end of the day, you know how many times I told God I love him and I don't pray enough and I don't talk to him enough and I don't get close to him or with him enough. And 
I know that he still loves me and I'll be, I'll come back and I'm like, what's up God? I know it's been a minute. It's your favorite home girl. And I know that that idea could be really tough for some people. And I'm praying that God is just speaking through me as I talk to you all. But I want to love like how he loves. I want to love like how the kingdom loves. I want to be able to love, even though it may not be reciprocated back, even though it's like, it's like, I feel like we live in this generation where we're trying to mirror people so much. Like, oh, if you do this to me, then I'm gonna do that to you. And it's just like, remain constant. Like love doesn't, love doesn't waver in the, in the eyes of adversity. It doesn't react, you know, it doesn't try to get even, <laughs> you know what I mean? So since I was younger, I've grown up in a two parent household. You know, I know a lot of people aren't, aren't able to experience that, but I was able to experience a two parent household, grew up with two parents that, um, they loved one another. They showed us love a lot, me and my brothers. And, you know, I, I looked up to that. I really wanted that. <laughs> I still want that. I know God, uh, is going to give that to me, you know, but it has skewed my views on love a lot because sometimes you're just so caught up in living up to what your parents have or what that one couple has and that one friend group that you kind of take on that identity. And when you meet someone, you're so like anxious to make that work and to say, this is love, this is love. And I'm realizing right now as I'm single and I'm still getting close with God, I'm still healing. And when I try to date and really talk, I'm not really dating anyone right now. Like I said, I really just talk to my, my sister. I talk to my brothers. I talk to my friends, my best friends. Um, and then my new friend that I just met, like we talk, we click, we hang. But what I realize is that I, w I would have this tendency to like make myself fall in love with people. And cause I, I love humans so much. I, I feel like we all have a story. We all have something beautiful that needs to be said. And sometimes I would force myself or like kind of make myself fall in love with that person. Meanwhile, the person is showing me their true characters, their, their true traits and, there's nothing for them to fall in love with, you know, you know, I think I'm amazing, of course, but they're not trying to love me on that level. So I realized that I was always on the opposition of like, love me, love me. You're so amazing. Da, da, da. And meanwhile, they're just chilling by coasted and they're like, yeah, sure, Sam, you know, like, I guess I could love you. And I'm saying all of this to say, if you're out there and you want to find love and you want to be in love and you want to be married and you want a healthy relationship, you have to seek the love one from God because God's always going to be there and two, love from yourself. And I know it's so cliche, but y'all, it took me 28 years to crack, crack the code. You know, like if you don't love yourself, if you don't talk to God and give your heart to God so God can give your heart to the person you're supposed to be with, you will always end up back in the same position, feeling like I'm being abandoned. No one gets me. No one understands me. He gets you. Our father, God, he gets you. He understands you. He, he knows you better than you know yourself. He created you, you know? So, um, I know it's tough because like what I've been going through right now is I have this new apartment, two bedroom apartment, and it's so big. And this is something that I've always wanted. And it's so crazy. The other day I broke down crying. I called my best friend and she's like, what's wrong? What's wrong? And I'm just like, I feel so alone. And I was like, I get it. I know I can talk to God. I know that he's there for me. I know he can hear me when I talk, but I feel so alone. Like I, like I want someone physically here. Like I'm like, why can't God just send someone physically here in my presence? You know, like. I get it. He, he can hear me. He hears my cries, but sometimes you just want someone there to like fill in the empty spaces. You want someone there to, to wipe your tears when you cry. You want someone to just be there while you're doing your thing, while you're cooking, while you're cleaning, while you're watching TV. Sometimes it just feels good physically seeing someone there. And that was me. I realized that I didn't like being alone by myself for too long. Like even today, I woke up today and I was just like, oh, I wonder if I can go over to see my brother today or go see my parents today or um, maybe I can hit up a friend and see if she's free and I can hang out with her because sometimes I don't like being alone. I don't like thinking. I don't like thinking too much because when I'm alone, my, my mind, you know, and you know that what they say in the Bible, like an idle mind is, a, is the devil's playground and I used to feel that way. I feel like when I'm alone and it's quiet and it's still, I just get to thinking. and I just get to thinking about things I shouldn't. I get to thinking that no one's there for me, that no one cares for me, that I'm going to be alone forever, that I'm not going to have kids. You know, all the lies of the enemy, the things that the enemy tells you, which aren't true. And I think this podcast, I think me talking right now with an epiphany with symphony will help me because even when no one's here, I can talk, I can, I can speak, I can have a conversation, you know, I can talk with God. I can say my thoughts out loud. I can get it off of my heart. Cause you know, 
you have to, you have to protect your heart. <laughs> you know, they say that, you know, guard your heart because everything flows from it. And you'll realize that you realize that when it comes down to like, say you're talking to a dude, right? Say you're talking to a girl and you're really into them. You really like them. You might even love them. Right. And they could say, Hey, could you drive me to like Canada? You know, it's like a, it's like an eight hour drive. You'd, you'd find every way in the world to do it because when you love someone, you, your decisions, your mindset, the actions that you do, it all kind of stems from that. So it's so powerful. And I had a friend, um, like two years ago, his name is Ludnik. And I remember I used to be like, these guys keep breaking my heart. They keep breaking my heart. And he would be like, that's because you're, you're giving your heart to them. You need to be giving your heart to God and God will give your heart to the person you're supposed to be with. And that always clicked and stuck in my head. So I can't, I can't even like confidently say, Oh, someone's breaking my heart anymore. Cause it's just like, well, they shouldn't have access to it. Like God should be the one that has access to your heart. And then from there, he gives your heart to the person it needs to be with, you know, cause you know, he's going to protect it. He's going to make sure that you're in good hands. And I get it. No one's perfect. You know, we're, we're humans. We all make mistakes, but you learn to love and grow and move through those decisions when God just is like, Hey, this is the person that I know is going to protect you. Who's going to protect your heart, who won't play games with it. And he's the one that's best suited for you. So I just knew that when I hopped on here today, I wanted to get that stuff off of my chest. Cause I have so much love in my chest. I have so much love in my heart. I love so many things. I love so many people. And, and I know that it's okay. You know, I'm one of those people, like, I literally will give you the shirt off of my back, you know, when I lose friends or when people walk away from me, it hurts so much. Cause it's like, y'all don't know how much I love y'all. I don't know the things that I would do for y'all. You know, like I'm that person, <laughs> but I'm realizing that it's okay. It's okay to love hard, you know, but still guard your heart, protect your heart, protect it, and make sure that when you do decide to give it to someone, you're being cautious with it. You know, before I was just really frilly nilly with my love and with my heart, and I still love people. I still love big. Don't get it, don't get it twisted. I'm a lover girl forever for life, um, but you still have to be cautious with it. And something really important I want to just talk about, I don't know how many guys are watching this or whatever, but I did see a video the other day where they were talking about, like, a guy once said that women love people from 100 and then work their way down, and men love people from zero and work their way up. And I thought it was so deep because it's like, ask a guy that just started talking to someone and say, hey, how do you feel about so-and-so? And they'll be like, oh, sh she cool, you know, she's straight. You know, I'm vibing with her. Like, she, she's cool. And then if you ask a woman the same thing, like, hey, how do you feel about that guy you just started talking to? They're like, y'all, I think he might be the one. He just finished doing this for so-and-so. He's so creative. He's so sweet. And it's just like, sis, you don't even know him. You don't know him. You have, you're falling in love with an idea, but you don't know that person. And I think oftentimes, especially when it comes down to women, I got to preach to my women, we fall in love with this idea of a man. We fall in love so quickly. And meanwhile, we, we know nothing about them. So when we're starting at a hundred and then you see a red flag and then you see another red flag and then you see he's disrespectful to people and he's rude and you're just like, yeah, like he just switched up. No, sis, he never... He always was this. He was always showing his true colors. You just was holding them up at 100 and then knocking down as you go. Whereas a dude, this is why I feel like men, it's so easy for them to get over someone quickly because they never really was into you. You know, they were already, they were, they're starting at zero and trying to add points to the tally. Like they're trying to see, okay, the more and more they get to know you and talk to you, if they really like you, if they really love you, you, you know, you got to work for a man's heart. And I say that to say as women, we need to start doing a little bit more of that. We need to start letting people work for your love. And I think sometimes I give love away so freely. I don't let people work for it. Not saying that this is a contest, like do, do a dance trick so I can see if I love you or not. I'm not saying that, you know, I'm just saying that sometimes we have to be, we have to be on guard and we have to make it, we have to see if these people have the qualities and traits to be someone that we should be giving love out so freely to, especially if you're someone like me who loves hard and loves deeply. I hope this is like being helpful to someone. Like I said, it might not be helpful at all. Um, it may not be helpful. Maybe it's just me talking right now. Like I said, I think I wanted to do this just because I have a lot of thoughts that are always on my mind and I feel like this is the best way to get them out. 
I truly do believe that when God speaks to me and he flows through me, I'm able to share this message and it'll help someone else out there who may be going through the same thing as me, who may know someone who's going through the same thing as me. Because y'all, your love, the love that you have is so special and so sacred. You should want to give it out to people who are one, going to receive it. And second, people who are going to get that love right back to you. You know, like you deserve that. You're, you do, you deserve the love that you give out so freely to everyone else. I truly believe it. I truly believe that y'all. Um, but yeah, no, right. First episode of an epiphany with Symphony. Um, I don't know how long these are going to be. I guess it just depends on what I have to say and what I'm talking about, but yeah, I wanted to hop on here and talk to my, my lover boys out there, my lover girls out there who are, who are seeking for love and who are, who are out there looking for love and just tell them that like, love yourself first, love God first, uh, seek out God's love and let him show you how much love he has to, to give you. And, you know, I just want to say, Father God, I'm praying over anyone who's watching this, who's listening to this message and just let them know that you are always there for them. You have never left them. You have not forsaken them, that you will wrap your arms around them, Father God, and let them know that they are loved and that they are beautiful just the way they are. And as you grow closer with them and they grow closer with you, that you just open up their mind and their hearts and let them know that, hey, love is out there. Love is not it's not corrupted by the world, you know, like there's someone out there who's going to love you the way that you need to be loved, who's going to care for you the way that they want to care for you. And everything's going to be all right, Father God, just go ahead and remind them right now, lift up their spirits, lift up their hearts and let them know that you are always going to be there for them no matter what. You are always present. Amen, amen, amen. But yes, the first episode of an epiphany with symphony, an epiphany with symphony. Yeah. I love you guys so much. Um, as I get better with this, like I said, this is really my first go around. I literally just clicked play and started this. Um, eventually I'll get better without chopping and just be able to talk all the way through. I'm literally doing this on my iPhone, by the way, too. So we'll see if it was even recording this whole time, but glory to the most high. I hope you guys have an amazing day, week, weekend, all that good stuff. And I will see you in the next episode. Much love.